joined now by Husker Alliance, Sean Callahan. Sean, good morning. There's a little bit of a fiasco last night in Champaign with a little fire in the stadium. You're not concerned about the game Friday, right? You there, Sean? Yeah, sorry. I, uh, I just went to program. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Sean. I was just talking about that. There's a, a fire last night at Memorial Stadium. Not this one, the one in Champaign. Uh it kind of had a frenzy on Twitter, but there, there's no concerns about the, anything with the game on Friday night, right, Sean? Yeah, it, it felt like something for about 15 minutes, and then I, I think you realized, <laughs> I think it was a, far, a fire maybe in some sort of um, a sports utility vehicle in the stadium. But, you know, what's what happened, my thought was, like, could this be something that could get on the playing surface, affect the playing surface? Right. Uh, but, yeah, luckily um, it, it was just more of a Twitter headline last night, and hopefully everything's good to go. Sean, a lot of talk about this Sunday practice, about Nebraska's response to this, oh, tobacco, um, the dumpster fire <laughs> at Memorial Stadium on Saturday. What what, what have you seen over there that would lead you to believe that they will be okay for this game Friday? Well, we don't really know. I mean, one way or the other, but it's a big game for both programs. That's what I know. I mean, Illinois, mm-hmm. uh, with where they're at, I mean, this is kind of a game that, will help their season one way or the other. And, and I think it has the same feeling for Nebraska. So, yes, it's a matchup of two, two and three teams. Uh, but I think for Nebraska, w- will they respond is, is the question. I mean, Rule brought those guys out there Sunday. And you heard Tony White say he had never been a part of something like that. Last night on Big Red Wrap-Up, Jay Moore um, said he used to hear stories that Joe Tiller would do that at Purdue. Um, every once in a while. And, and as a player, when that happens the first time, you, you don't ever want to go through that again on a Sunday. Um, and, and, and he, he said, you, you're going to go hard uh, from there on out. So hopefully it was a wake-up call that, hey, you know what, you got to show up for the fight on Saturday, especially when 87,000 people are in there um, expecting you to show up for it. But yeah, Michigan's a better team than you were, um, more talent than you have. Um, but, you know, that has, Nebraska's played Michigan tough every time they've been in Memorial Stadium. I mean, you, should, you should be up for that game. The defense got jackhammered. Nebraska defense got jackhammered by Michigan. Does it change? Does that game? Now, that was a defense that had led the nation in, in rushing defense, was playing pretty well, pretty well. Does it? Does that game change the way you look at this defense, the Nebraska no. defense? I mean, Michigan had elite pro talent. Who else on the schedule the rest of the way? I mean, there's a couple, Maryland and Wisconsin are decent teams, but who has elite pro offensive talent that they're going to see the rest of the way? Like, you don't see a lot of it, yeah. Really say too many of the seven teams remaining. Um, I, I, I still think, you know, no rhyme, right? Your best linebacker, all Big Ten guy. Singleton, who had been playing as well as anybody in the secondary, goes out second play. I mean, they were, they, they, they were missing some key components. So they haven't obviously had Linhart. You hope he's back, but, um, I, I just don't know if it's going to be that bad ever again because you know Michigan's offensive line also has seven guys that are being looked at to play in the Senior Bowl right now. Um, so they, they, they were loaded on all fronts. The key is third down. Nebraska's defense couldn't win on those key early third downs of the game. Um, and you know the, the touchdown, the opening touchdown, they were in position. Um, the guy made a good play. I mean, there were just some moments in that game early that just set the tone. And then when they jumped up 14 nothing at that point, it just felt like it was going to be a hole that was going to be hard to ever get out of. So by Sean Callahan. Sean, if the goal of the season is to make a bowl game, how vital is this particular game for Nebraska to win to make that possible? It's extremely vital. I mean, I, I, I guess it's the key game, but it is. Uh, seven games remaining. Not one of the seven opponents is ranked. Since Nebraska has been in the Big Ten, now it could change with Maryland or Wisconsin maybe getting ranked. But they've never gone seven straight games in the Big Ten where they have not seen a ranked opponent since joining this league in 2011. Um, Sip brought this point up on our show last week. Uh, Nebraska will never have a more favorable schedule than they have right now in terms of how it lays out um, with opponents. It's the final year of the Big Ten West. It's the final year the Big Ten won't have USC, UCLA, Oregon, Washington. Um, and, and you know, So you know every year from here on out, it's going to be much, much, much tougher. And they've got to take advantage of these opportunities because they've got seven games here where they, they can be in each one of these games where they play their best football. Rule, Sean, says they're sticking with – it sounds like they're sticking with Tristan Alvano at, at kicker. Could have a close game Friday. 
what what kind of confidence would you have if they stick him out there with the game on the line? Well, he's missed his last three in a row. He's one of four um, overall as a kicker. Um, you know, he's kicking into a pretty good South win last week. Uh, but still, you, you got to make those kicks um, in Memorial Stadium. The one the week before he missed, there was no wind. Um, and yeah, it's, it, he's a freshman, and you can tell they're sticking behind him. I mean, last night, Ed Foley had similar comments that they know what he can do. They watch practice. Um, they're high on this kid. You, you know, you just got to get through it. But you'd like to see him get kind of a, a shorter, easier chip shot field goal just to kind of – you know, break this, break the streak here and just get going a little bit, you know, and, uh, cause it, a lot of his kicks have been longer. I mean, the one last week was 40, but it was in the wind. You'd like to see him just kind of step up there and nail one just to, to get, get a little momentum going as a, as a kicker. Sean, Nebraska is 14th in the country in rush yards per game, 125th in passing yards per game. You know, so pretty predictable offensively how they're going to operate. How, how will that go with the rest of the Big Ten slate in terms of teams knowing what they want to do and stopping that? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a 40, run, run it 40 times, probably throw it 20 times type team. Um, you know, the, that, that's the formula they want to play with. Um, they don't work. I mean, there's a lot of teams in this conference that play that style, though, um, of offense where they're going to try to run it over 60, 65% of the time. And that's how Nebraska's playing under Frost. They were closer to 50 50 um, with, with sometimes how they operated, um, or maybe 55 run, 45 pass in that, in that range. I just think with what they have right now, that's the style they have to play. They cannot throw it 30 plus times and put those tackles out there and pass pro that many times. We, we've seen enough what's happened. Uh, those tackles aren't good enough to hold up, um, in, in a pass pro situation. So the running game will help those guys. The key Anthony Grant has to get going again. I mean, six carries last week, not enough. Heiner Carr, we're going to QB run game. Michigan had enough good athletes. They took that away. It wasn't really even a factor which then forced Heinrich to throw up more, um, and he had 199 yards. And there were some pauses. I thought the way he threw it at times looked good, um, especially against the quality of defense Michigan has. Um, But for this offense to really be what it is, they've got to run for over 200 200, uh, to 200 to 250 rushing yards in the game. And if they do that, they're going to be in any, any of these games. Big picture question, or bigger picture question, as we look at the Big Ten West in its final incarnation <laughs> um i don't know if that's the right word bill look that up um i, I, I google <laughs> i sean i was looking at it this morning this just looks once again like iowa wisconsin like a, it's going to be a, a two-team battle i'm looking at schedules i'm looking at what they've done it looks like iowa wisconsin would you push back on that notion well if nebraska would have beat minnesota <laughs> Like they should have when they were went in ten to set three with five minutes left. Yeah, they 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 could at least have their name like sitting outside the ring. Right yeah. now they've got a lot of work to do. So yeah, Purdue's the sleeper. You yeah, know, if Purdue goes in and beats Iowa this weekend, yeah. all of a sudden they're in this discussion too. But the crossovers this year, I think, weigh heavily. Wisconsin's got really favorable crossovers, as is Iowa. Um, so then it puts that head to head game between those two teams. Um, and Iowa, Iowa won that key crossover last week against Michigan State um, when McNamara got hurt. So that's going to loom really big. But, yeah, when you're ranking the West, the Iowa defense still might be the best overall unit in the West. Okay. Would you push back on that, Sid? No. No, I wouldn't. But here's the thing with Purdue as a sleeper and that sleeper talk. They still play Ohio State and Michigan. Oof. They it's, still got Ohio State and Michigan. Hello. Yeah. I mean, hello. that's – their schedule's really rough. But you're right. Now, if Purdue would go to Iowa and win, you'd have to put them in the conversation. I just don't think they'd be in the conversation for very long because they're going to get thumped by Ohio State. And, I mean, hey, I mean, we saw Michigan, John. I mean, that's – they can hurt you. I mean, they, they can they can screw up your season a little bit. Yeah, but Iowa or Wisconsin could easily go 7-2 and two still in the, in the division. Right. I mean, just the way it sets up. Right. Sean, always good stuff. Thanks for the time. We'll chat with you again next week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.